The Kira Pentecostal Empowerment Ministries International of 27 Magdalene Street, Kira, Trinidad, West Indies presents Empowerment Through the Word. Come with us as we affect humanity with the life transforming power of the Gospel of Jesus Christ. We invite you to stay tuned and be blessed. My eyes are fixed upon his face It shines like the sun I can see Jesus clothed in glory He is high and lifted up and his train fills the temple And all of the angels cry Holy All the saints cry Holy Holy is the Lamb All praise unto the Lamb Who sits on the throne joy it is to be with you again 
Give the Lord praise. We bless his name today because he is good and his mercy endureth forever. Are you thanking him from the depths of your spirit and your soul? Hallelujah. He deserves all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. We bless your name, Father, for your goodness and for your faithfulness and for your loving kindness and for your tender mercies. You are the majestic one. You are the glorious one. You are the gracious one. And we adore you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are in total control. We bless your holy name this morning. Thank you for giving me the privilege to come into your homes again, into your hotel rooms, into the place where you're into uh, self-isolation and quarantine because of what is taking place. And uh, we are very much aware and we're asking you please to continue to look to the Lord. I trust today this message, the, the, our time together will, call, will lift your spirit. Hallelujah. Where you're able to call upon him again. Where you're able to reach out to someone again. God remains faithful. Bless the name of the Lord. I want to thank God for you and for your prayers and for the many of you who say the program is a blessing to you. Do continue to send them in. Let us know what is happening. My desire is to do the will of the Lord and to be present so that when he calls, I will answer. Thank you again. God richly bless you. This morning, we want to continue on that subject there of exercising godliness. Exercising godliness. Training yourself. Getting yourself together. Doing that which will cause you to develop, as it were, your spiritual muscles, spiritual acumen as we deal with the times, as we confront the times that are before us. Thank you, Lord. And I'm reading from the book of First Timothy, First Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. But refuse profane and all wise fables. In other words, don't get yourself um, preoccupied with, with, with people and with sayings that will profit you nothing. And exercise thyself rather unto godliness. So you're making a choice. I choose, knowing Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord, I choose to exercise myself unto godliness. For bodily exercise profited little, but godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of life that now is and of that which is is to come. So it is not just for time, but for all eternity when we're talking about exercising godliness. Remember, please, it is not about exercising a religion. It is about exercising godliness. We establish the fact that the basis for the exercising of Godliness has to do with faith, Hebrews 11, 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please God. 
For he who comes to God must believe that God is and that is the reward of those who will diligently seeking. Because the basis of the word there has to do with you see beyond meaning to speak well of. So when we speak well of our God, then we must do what he says so that we in turn will experience his wellness, his goodness, his favor, his sustenance, his satisfaction, his salvation. Blessed be the wonderful name of the Lord. Then we establish the fact too, it has to do with uh, communicating, first of all with him and then with each other. And that is true our good works. Now that we know him, we work, we seek to please him by doing and exercising good works. Uh, Hebrews 13, 16 reminds, but to do good and to communicate, forget not, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. And so many times we fall short, but we have to move on. Get up and move on. Yes, you must have failed many times. I have failed. We have failed, but we cannot Stop there. We have to ask for the forgiveness of God and move on when it comes to even helping. Ephesians 2 and verse number 10 reminds us we are his workmanship or we are a work. God is working in me. God is working in you. God is working on us. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works for which God has ordained that we should walk in them. We should live. We should order our lives in them. Then, um, the basis for exercising godliness, remember that bodily exercise it little, but godliness is profitable unto all things. What another very important truth or another very important basis for exercising godliness is walking in truth. Walking in truth. Third John 2 to 4 has to do with the fact that uh, John the Beloved was commending the brethren, especially Gaius, as to you, the fact of you are walking in the truth. Oh, this is godliness as embodied in and communicated through the love of God and faith in Jesus Christ. This is godliness. Truth is godliness as embodied in and communicated through the truth when it comes to Jesus Christ. And we know that he is the living word. He is the way, the truth, and the life. John chapter 14 and verse 6, And no man comes unto the Father but by him. It pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. Colossians chapter 1 and verse number 19. For in him are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and of knowledge. Colossians chapter 2 and verse 3. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of the, of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. So walking, if we're going to exercise ourselves uh, unto godliness, we must be willing to walk in the truth, who is Jesus Christ. Walk in him. Colossians 2 and verse 6, as you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Him. What a wonderful privilege huh? to, to, to know him and to live for 
him. Hallelujah. So then we also went on to speak of the fact of as we exercise ourselves under godliness, it is important that we get into a, a time of spend time, quality time in prayer, spend quality time fasting, and some of us have more time available. Redeem it. Redeem the time because the days are evil. Build yourselves up in the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Jude 20. Yes, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. Ephesians 6, 18. Then a deliberate desire for the Word is so important. Let the Word of Christ dwell in us richly. Allow that to take place. Colossians 3, 16 and 17. Then we continue as saying as we ex exercising ourselves unto godliness. As we exercise, what do we do when it comes to godliness? Well, it has also to do with pressing the pressing, you know, not giving up. Philippians 3, 13 and 14. Forgetting those things which are behind. And reaching forth unto those things which are before us. I press towards the mark for the price of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. I notice I press I do all that I can. The mustering of the effort. You see, because I am exercising myself unto godliness. And so I can't go by my feelings. The gymnast, the, the athlete, the soccer player, the NBA player. You can't go by feelings. Sometimes you, 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 there's so many um, challenges, uh, physical challenges you've got to be dealing with. You have to do, deal with. It is before you. You know how you feel, but you've got to go beyond that. As it is in the natural, so it is in the spiritual so often we 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 forget that when we the more we spend time before God, the more we remain blessed and and challenged and and strengthened. Hallelujah! So what that reminds us as we pressing, not giving up, that entitles us to fight the good fight of faith. First Timothy six eleven and. Well, fight the good fight of faith. Many times the enemy is going to seek to, to cause you to want to bring down that shield. But that's where it comes in. That shield of faith, wherewith we shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Then we remember we are into spiritual warfare. So we are to war a good warfare. First Timothy 1 18 and 19. Hallelujah. Then, as I mentioned earlier, we need to go beyond our feelings. Remember, we are exercising ourselves unto godliness. Go beyond our feelings. Second Corinthians chapter 10 from the sixth verse, or from the third verse rather, though we live in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations. And every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. 
and the enemy is going to seek to bombard us with thoughts that are not according to the word of God negative thoughts, negative feelings. Oh, we've got to learn that, you see. And we achieve that when we exercise, we keep exercising ourselves unto godliness. Prayer, fasting, the Word of God going beyond our feelings. Hallelujah. Blessed be the wonderful name of the Lord. Then the word you see behold also has to do with worship. You sib, that's S E B Seb, signifies that sacred awe and describes reverence exhibited, especially in our actions. So that word there, when we are exercising godliness, that has also to do, how are we going to do that? It has also to do with worship. Having an attitude of gratitude. So many times we take this for granted. Just taking time out to give God worship. Hallelujah. It has to do with our actions. It describes reverence exhibited especially in our actions. Psalm 63 gives this to us. Lord, your loving kindness is better than life. My lips shall praise you. Yes, my lips shall praise you. My lips shall speak the things to glorify you rather than foolish and old talk. Oh, time needs to be taken out to give him thanks and give him praise and speak a good word to someone. My lips shall praise you. Thus will I bless you. Psalm 63, 1 to 6. I would lift up my hands in your name. That's right. The lifting up of our hands to give him praise and honor and glory. You are exercising yourself unto godliness. Hallelujah. So the lifting above our hands, remember it has to do with the actions we exhibit. My eyes, my hands, my feet. I give you praise. Hallelujah. I clap unto you. I bless your holy name. It's not a, a, a Pentecostal jargon. It is biblical. Hallelujah. Remember Jesus said, the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. John 4, 23 and 24. But if we're talking worship to a righteous and holy and living God, how can we not open our mouth and shout hallelujah? How can we not lift our hands in praise and adoration to him? Glory to God. Yes, when our favorite basketball player, our favorite crick uh, cricketer uh, hits a six, um, you know, we, are, we, are, we, we become so excited. We don't even know them personally, but we know him personally. He's a good God. He's a great God. Come on. Hallelujah. That's why the Bible reminds us to present our bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable unto him. It's so important to give him praise 
and glory and honor and worship. Hallelujah. Blessed be the wonderful name of the Lord. So we exercise ourselves unto godliness by including the members of our body to worship him. Hallelujah. So again, let me get that. For bodily exercise profited little. But godliness is profitable unto all things, having the promise of life that now is and of that which is to come. The life that now is, faith in God, the grace of God coming our way, the fruit of the Spirit, the ability to, to reach out and to love one another in spite of. Hallelujah. And what about the life to come? John 5 and verse number 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he who heareth my word and believeth on him who sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Eternal life forever with our Lord Jesus Christ. I know that this is your goal. This is your desire also. But do you know him personally? This is so important. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? What? What do you have to give unto him today more than you? He needs you. He needs me. Will you pray with me this morning? Say with me, oh God, I come to you just as I am. I repent of my sins today. I desire to serve you. Forgive me. Come into my Lord, my life, Lord Jesus, and save me. I confess you now as my Savior and as my Lord. And I believe in my heart you are alive and alive forevermore. So thank you now for saving me in writing my name in your book of life. I love you, Jesus. Amen. Let me pray for you now, Father, and I thank you for those who've prayed that prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ now, I speak the word of healing and of deliverance. I rebuke sicknesses and diseases. God, those who are in isolation, those in ICU, Lord, let your miracle power come upon them now. Healing and deliverance. Quicken their mortal bodies, I pray. In the name of Jesus, strengthen our frontline workers, oh God, our doctors and our nurses. Some are overwhelmed, but oh God, undergird them with your grace. In the name of Jesus the Christ, and continue to bless this blessed land, oh God, as we look to you. In the name of Jesus the Christ, Amen and Amen. Well, Trinidad and Tobago, wherever we are heard, remember we are not going under. Why? Because Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The Lord richly bless you and your household. Have a great week. Amen and amen.